I V M. Hey everybody, welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. Wow, we're dealing with some stuff, aren't we? The COVID-19 scare we're facing in India and the world has, well, you know, I mean, like it's really changed our lives, hasn't it? But it's also seriously impacted our ability to create podcasts and to get them out to you on schedule. Over the next few weeks, I'd like to ask for your patience if episodes are delayed or postponed. We're also going to be doing many other recordings remotely, like this one, for example, right? And sound quality is going to be a little uneven while we're facing this time, right? If you want to listen to discussions about COVID, we have had conversations on Cider Says, the Prakati Podcast, Thalia Rate, All Things Policy, The Apple Coach, and other shows as well, right? So, I mean, like, uh, please do continue to stay tuned, and we will be talking about this stuff, and we'll be talking about life in general. Also, want to thank our sponsors this week, HDSC Life and Paytm Money. So, let's get on with this, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Welcome to the new normal, because that's what this is. That's where we find ourselves. Um, if you think two, three weeks back, uh, think about your life, think about your routine, think about how you went about your job, how you just went about your life and think about what your life is like right now. And you know that this is your new normal, not because it's always going to be this way, but because after this, even when things get back to normalcy, which I'm hopefully soon and not later. A lot of this and a lot of learnings from this will actually seep into how we, you know, lead our lives, lead our work lives, lead our personal lives, just lead our social and, and, and all kinds of lives. And we've learned so much, haven't we? Uh, we've not just, not just about, you know, uh, how a pandemic can really wreak havoc across the world, but really about how we could actually lead a large part of our lives remotely without actually getting into work. But there's so many things that we really miss because we can't get out of the house. And I have so many thoughts, right? I've spent the last one week thinking about, do I even do an episode? So I went online and asked you guys what you wanted to know. What did you want to hear? And most of you had very, very interesting questions. You had questions that were about the present, about what the future holds, about so many different aspects of this industry, which are so important to address and kind of kind of put out there and, and start that conversation because this is the new normal. This is where things are really changing and things are going to evolve for all of us. That's what's ahead in this episode of Advertising Stead. I'm Varun Lugirala, go for and Konachi for the glitch. And we'll be right back with this or other. We'll be right back with advertising in the time of a pandemic. This is the amazing story of something awesome. Once Chuck decided to start a podcast. And so he did. The end. Okay, that is a crappy story. But I've got some really cool stories over at my new show, The Origin of Things. On this podcast, I look at the stories of how brands came into being and sometimes evolved out of quite unexpected circumstances. And to make it really fun, I reveal the name of the brand and sometimes a category only at the very end. The show is 5 to 7 minutes per episode and perfect for trivia junkies and brand nerds, especially those with short attention spans. New episodes out every Wednesday on IVM Podcast app or website or any podcast app or site that you happen to prefer. End of story, they lived happily ever after. Welcome back to Advertising is Dead. Yeah, I've been, I have a feeling I went a little too intense in the introduction. Um, I will keep this chirpy and I will keep this fun. Um, as much as it is possible, because it's not like um, we need to be morose about this, right? We're all working from home. Um, we're all figuring this thing out, um, this whole situation out as things go along. So let's get into the first question. Um, the first question comes in from Pranav Patadia. Um, he runs an agency called Insomniacs. He's one of the co-founders there. And uh, this is what he had to ask. My question is in two parts, essentially. As an agency, what do you do to ensure that during such crisis, your operations are running fine and, and uh, your quality is right there, your clients are getting the, the things that they really need during such times. And B, uh, what kind of a take should a brand really take during such times? Because it is kind of confusing for all the brands whether they should come out and really take a stand on it, uh, be, be spread awareness about it, whether they shouldn't. Uh, and will it backfire, will it not backfire? Like there, there's a confusion that even the clients are facing. So what would your take be on this? I honestly felt um, 
this is one of the most important questions to address. So I'm actually going to break this question up into a couple of parts. Um, part one is going to be, how do you adapt to the situation we all find ourselves in? Um, let me first put an example about how we as, as, as the glitch have adapted to this. Um, I've been on the sidelines and I've seen the fact that leadership really needs to step up. Um, Pooja marshaled our entire leadership together for the, for one week to 10 days before we actually had to get to work from home. There were entire frameworks built out to make sure people were not on the phone all the time, were not on WhatsApp all the time. You know, they should not be working 16, 18 hour chaotic days um, because that just kills everything. Very clearly, um, what are we doing today? Every, every morning, how have things gone every evening? Each team, each unit had specific people who were driving it. There were business um, discussions through the day. We figured the right kind of digital tools to use. Uh, we worked, um, we started using Teams and, and it's been a revelation for a lot of us. You know, I've been actually pushing the team for years to kind of use Teams and it never happened. It took this for everyone to get onto it. I'm really happy that they're seeing how much more they can actually do in this situation. So you planned ahead. You, if you haven't planned ahead, take a weekend, take a day, plan things out. Because if you don't plan it out and you don't make sure that people do not work 16 to 18 hours a day, that will kill them. And they will, they will, you know, it will kill the quality of work. It will kill the, it will kill the entire vibe of things. And most importantly, it won't be fun to do because that's what makes what we do great because it's fun to do. So yeah, build a framework. Give people ownership to take the lead on certain aspects. Make sure your clients are in the loop about how things are going to function now. See what you can do, what you can't do. We can't do shoots anymore, right? Because you can't do shoots. It's, it's not safe. But what our video team turned around and said, guys, there's so much more we can do across in post-production. So that really got planned out. And so we had multiple units set up remotely in editors, houses, etc. Um, make sure everybody has internet. IT came into it, right? IT built an entire framework. These are things you need to do. You need to be able to think of everything that can go wrong. Keep taking tabs on how things are going. Leadership does a call almost once, twice a week. How, what is what is working? What is not working? How do we adapt? And that's how we got to do it. I also thought it would be interesting to ask another agency CEO, um, actually someone who's taken over very recently as a CEO um, of his agency. I asked Gautam Dragunath, um, the CEO of Web Chutney, but how he's adapting to this. Surprising positives. A lot of positives. Number one, I'm so amazed at the flexibility of all our teams. And I see a lot of CEOs and other agency leaders also posting about this on social media. For example, how efficiently all our IT teams managed to go remote in a matter of days was truly outstanding. I mean, um, uh, the first thing that came to mind for most agencies is, oh shit, how my designers were on those big, big Mac machines going to manage working from home? How do we even transport it? In fact, uh, issues that we would have never considered, like uh, availability of a proper work desk table at people's houses or power issues and needing a UPS and things like that started coming up, right? So I admit it was nervy, and uh, but our IT teams collectively said, buddy, here you go, hold my drink. Uh, let me get this done and get this done in a matter of hours. So huge, huge props to them. Um, also, in a weird way, we've realized that all the software that we required for frictionless communication and frictionless work already exists. It's the hardware that we've struggled with now very weirdly. Um, another huge positive has been productivity and um, ownership of productivity. Um, you now see a lot more of, uh, you know, let's not waste any more time now than you did before. Um, companies, I think, uh, when you when you first start thinking about remote, you worry that, uh, your employees won't work enough when operating remotely. I think the opposite is true. And it might even be so true that it's becoming a problem. Um, so yes, positive. Uh, but we'll need to help folks carefully manage their workloads. Um, work and life are blending into each other like never before. So it's very easy to get carried away. I think um, this is also where we'll begin to see time being replaced as the main KPI for judging performance. Uh, and it's going to be replaced by productivity and output like it always should be. Um, uh, another positive, I think, is uh, something that might probably sound a little bit silly now, but there are uh, proactive things folks are doing and trying to do actively to sort of help each other out during the shutdown. 
I've been hearing murmurs. I can't confirm. I've been hearing murmurs of web chatting cooking classes. So a lot of our um, uh, colleagues are migrants uh, to cities like Bombay, Bangalore, Delhi, and um, all most likely living with flatmates and things like that. So uh, I don't think most can't cook to save their lives. Uh, so there are people um, and a lot of senior people who have taken it upon themselves to live stream cooking classes. for basic stuff like dal and microwave like uh, microwave rice and things like that all in good fun now the second part now uh, and i think it's important to address the second part the second part is let's look at the positives of this whole situation because let's let's you know how to overcome the hurdles is about all I've, all we both said before what is important to look at is how do we look at the positives of the situation what have i understood i've understood the fact that you can be far more productive many times if you're working from a remote location or working from home because you know you you cut commute time you cut a lot of the time pass sadly and what you also actually do is that you have slotted things out really well it gives you a lot of balance it sucks that you can't get out of the house but it gives you a lot of balance so once this is past us what is actually going to be interesting is how we're going to go after this right i i was i saw this beautiful thing about um this other agency will 82.5 they were doing this whole celebration because somebody was uh, moving on to a different role and they did this whole um uh, dumb charade piece of zoom and they put a screenshot up a screenshot up on linkedin and i was so happy to see that right? people are adapting to this way of conversing uh, a way of working together and nothing is cooler than that teams are coming closer together because you're not in your office mode as much as you might try you're not in your office mode you are you're at home and you, everybody's at home and you're more relaxed many times and and that can breed a lot of you know team bonding the way i see it what it's also brought out for me the most important thing is brought out is the fact that people have stepped up people have stepped up and say let me take charge of this let me take charge of that or someone said okay we're in this situation right now this is how we can innovate this is how we can adapt that's priceless right i mean once we come out of this those are learnings i'm going to look at and say guys we shouldn't lose these learnings i actually asked gotham the same question as well i asked him what he seen as interesting or other surprising positives out of this and this is what he had to say how has it been so far well the honest truth is that it's just been okay man i miss my work i miss my office i miss our people i miss lunch time and i miss my one on ones and my face to face meetings and things like that I mean it's been very obvious that agency culture isn't by nature very remote friendly and I'm not even talking full time remote work like our friends in tech who've been doing it for a while right and for us sort of working from home is obviously brought with its own set of challenges uh for starters we'll need to find a proper way to work together while we're not all actually together that's been tough uh it's been tough because agency culture as a concept a huge part of what makes an agency itself is its culture that's what we're selling and these are typically built for in person workplaces and uh, where you're face to face in discussion and throwing ideas at each other and disagreeing and nodding and making whiteboard notes in excitement when a good idea pops up and things like that so it that's been hard um uh, so i imagine that companies with a strong sense of trust among each other and in each other will tide through this transitional period easier than the others companies where people have a lot more ownership and uh mid and lower level managers are also empowered etc um work from home policies that are being implemented typically tend to reflect company culture of that particular workplace companies who don't trust their people will fail at work from home i mean that's a short i've seen um, uh, companies expecting daily daily video stand ups uh, to track their workers for example switch on your monitors at 10 am and things like that right um, these are firms that are confusing productivity with availability and um truth is i've been guilty of versions of these occasionally myself earlier uh, especially early on in my stints as a leader earlier uh for a long time i used to think that uh, i belong to this old school of thought where seeing is believing you know i mean the way that uh, leaders grapple between trust and control issues and wanting real work happening right on the agency floor right in front of them it's all very silly when you think about it now uh but what's clear is that Uh, making a transition towards more flexibility will require changing aspects of this company culture that we're talking about uh it's something that might hurt in the short term but will be an absolutely inevitable competitive advantage in the long term 
I, I can already see how easily projects are shuffling between cities in Web Chutney itself. And we're all going to realize properly how we can now potentially look at hiring talent from anywhere. So yeah, that's the bright side. The next question comes in from Aarti Jairam. I've, I've known Aarti for a long time and, and when she kind of wrote in and said, and, and she said, this is an important question that needs to be addressed. Her question was... So the question I had for your next episode was, how does a freelancer survive in this current COVID-19 situation? You know, especially people like DOPs, makeup artists, directors, who will most probably be unemployed for the next few weeks or months. What are the options they can explore during this time? It is important, right? Um, we engage with freelancers all the time as agencies, as companies and as brands and everything else, right? Um, and they, in many ways, um, are the specialists you bring in for specific tasks. Other people you know will be great to bring in for X, Y, and Z. They make us look good. They make us do better shoots. They make us come up with better creative when it's executed and so on and so forth. And the, the list of freelancers is endless. In this time, it's it's tricky. You know, um, because a lot of them, if they're execution-led, especially shoot and stuff like that, there's nothing you can do because there are no shoots happening. Um, if there's, if there are people who are working from home, like I, I know for a fact, someone posted the other day that they have an audio set up at home and that, you know, if, if you need recording, I remember that was Tejas Menon um, and Tejas said that, uh, you know, I have an audio set up at home and, and if anybody needs any audio recorded or anything done, I can get that done. Um, and that's, that's the way some people can innovate, right? If you can actually do what you do uh, from your home. It's just about reaching out and say, guys, this is available. And if you guys want to reach out and, and, and you, want, you want to get something done, I can do that for you. But for people who actually can't do that from home, I think the onus is actually not as much on them as it is on us, as people who engage with them. Uh, we need to make sure that they're financially safe, that if they have money or other payments spending from our end to them, which which were due, let's say, in a month or so, it, it's important to announce and guys, do you need money right now? Because uh, if you do, uh, we'll try and release that a little early. We need to support them at this time. And that's something that is priceless. That, that is something um, that is so important because at the end of the day, we all do this together. This is a team sport. If we need to all do a good job in the future and we all need to do this together, then we need to support each other at these kind of times. And that's important. Um, and it goes for everybody. It goes for any person to employ as he, he could just be a, a daily wage uh, spot boy on, on your set could be a, an, an immensely talented director of photography, a director, um, uh, you know, a makeup artist. You need to make sure that they're secure and, and you're supporting them during this time. And, and really that's, that's my point of view on this. So there are a bunch more questions I'm going to get into, uh, but before we do that, we're going to go on for a break and we'll be right back with advertising is dead. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta. I'm B50 on Twitter. I am the host of Pesa Vesa, a show that talks money. On my show, I speak to experts from every field of money and finance, from stock markets, equities, debt funds, credit cards, life insurance, every possible area of money and finance that you can think of. We even did an episode on cryptocurrency. I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere. robo advisory, startups, just name it, we've got it. At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday and you can listen to my show on the IVM Podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have. Welcome back to Advertising is Dead. Um, so yeah, so we're doing, we're doing questions. Um, and the next question or other questions, you know, there were a bunch of questions where everyone's kind of wanting to understand how things are really going to change post COVID-19. Um, you know, how is it going to affect industry or rather how it's going to affect life right? and how we do things and, and, and all, all that stuff. Um, I reached out to Ranjit Raina, who's the CEO for Geometry and Compass. Um, I know he's always had um, very strong perspective um, on, on the entire space. And I thought he'd be a great person to ask this question. I'm going to let him answer and then it's going to come back and I'll put some points in as well. I think we will all see the emergence of a new reality. Uh, the lines between the physical and digital are evaporating every day. And this is for everyone. And at a scale we have never seen before. You know, even the most tech savvy guys to the novice 
you know, it's all of us are in this forced uh, boot camp. And we have no choice and we are here. And I think uh, by the time we get out, uh, fidgetal just won't be this other cool catchphrase that we use. It will be uh, the new normal for everything. And it's not just about uh, in what we do in business or at work, but even in the way we will live, uh, interact, uh, socialize, consume in everything. And more than anything, uh, innovation is not going to be a choice anymore. You know, it's time dinosaurs are going to die. Some will die very quickly and the others, you know, it will be painful and we will see a lot of hardship. But... You know, having said that, we will also see opportunity unlike anything that we have seen before. Uh, the coming months will define all of us, you know, countries, industries, companies. It doesn't matter, big or small. You know, the corner store, uh, person who works at home for you, you know, your colleagues, for all of us. And you know, now is the time and, you know, we have to steal for the hardship. But, you know, even more importantly... Uh, we have to prepare for the opportunity ahead in whatever we do. Uh, you know, a lot of people will be playing safe. Uh, many will, you know, doing that will shortchange their future. But, you know, those who look beyond just the quarterly budget or, you know, meeting market expectations, uh, those are the people who will really end up on top. You know, he makes so many interesting and rather so many important points there. Um, I just want to add a couple of things to what he said. I honestly feel that, you know, we always use these terms like, you know, adapt or die or, you know, the, this show is called advertising is dead because, you know, how traditional is facing all these struggles and digital is going to come in. I think we'll stop using all these things as catchphrases and understand that our reality now is to constantly be ready to adapt to anything that gets thrown at us. We'll become far more digital. We'll be far more focused on what we can do as companies, as agencies, as content creators, and as brands, which doesn't require us to be out there in the physical space um, as much or rather dependent as much on physical aspects and, and a lot more digital aspects will kind of come into play. We'll, we'll, we'll keep those in mind to make sure that when this happens again, because the way it looks, this is going to be something that will keep coming back cyclically in our lives. Um, we're far more prepared to not let it affect our businesses, to, to not let it affect how we as people work in the businesses that we do. And also to, to kind of change the entire paradigm of, of what it means to actually do advertising, that it doesn't necessarily have to have physical contact to create. And, and it maybe doesn't even re, really need, you know, the, the in-person requirement of offices we, we might be working with people from across the country across the world um, not needing to have them sit in our offices but really finding the best person for the job that's what i feel is going to be the biggest change uh, we're going to look at this in a very very different way the next question comes in from nalini shinde and this is what she had to ask in times of pandemics like the one going on right now do you think it is opportunistic of brands to join the conversation yet be relevant to their audience? Or do you think brands should take a step back and understand if it's even necessary to join the conversation in the first place? For example, in the current scenario, how would a brand like Asian Paints join the conversation if it had to? How and where would you draw the line? Okay, I'm not going to comment on, on Asian Paints because, you know, I, I don't, we, rather we as Glitch don't work with them and I don't think it's my place to comment on what a brand would do. But I'd like to talk about what brands in general need to do, you know, and agencies and brands together need to do in this time. It's very easy to say that, oh, this is what's going on. This is what everyone's talking about. Let's talk about it as well. What we need to always remember, pandemic or no pandemic, does this have to do anything with your brand? If it doesn't have anything to do with your brand, make sure you don't try to take it up as an opportunity to put your brand first. Right now it's pandemic first. It is safety first. It is, you know, taking care of precautions, staying at home, all those things first, right? And that's important. Think about that first 
and then see if there is any way in which you as a brand can really help the situation, can really aid the situation. You know, um, can you help in, let's say, creating and rather producing more sanitizers? Is, can you create more awareness about facts? Can you help um, create services that can aid people during this time in the world? If you can't do all those things, um, then don't try to do something in connection with the pandemic. Um, stick to what you do. Adapt to how life has changed for you as a brand and speak about that. Don't necessarily try to cater to, oh, why, why aren't we saying anything, in, anything about Corona? Don't. If it feels opportunistic at this point of time, trust me, the backlash will be far higher than you can ever expect. You know, um, and some brands have seen that. Some brands have tried to, I don't think, have really tried to jump in onto the bandwagon. I, I think they all have the right intentions. All brands have the right intentions. I don't think anybody really has the, the wrong intentions, especially in times like these. But it's important to look at the fact that what we all face as a world today needs to come first and what the brand is needs to come second. And that's crucial. And that is the line. That is where you keep things where you gauge things and you decide, okay, am I aiding this? Let me do this. Or rather, how is this affecting me? Let me do this. Or thirdly, let me just keep people engaged because they do need stuff to be engaged with. And, and, and as all of us do know, we do need to be engaged right now. So yeah, that's what brands need to do. The next question comes in from Sonam Shah. Um, her question is, Will work from home or flexi working options be the future of agency life? So I thought I'd tackle this in a slightly different way. Um, is this going to be, you know, the future of our work life? Yes, it is. Um, not from the fact that we're going to be working from home a lot. I think we're going to be working out of the office a lot. Um, if you have 100 people in the office, do you need to have 100 seats? Maybe not. Maybe you just need 60 because a lot of people work better in different spaces and people kind of come in and go out. And this is what creativity is all about. Right? The fact that you go out and get inspiration. Sometimes say, I don't want to get out of the house. I've got some stuff to do. I'm not going to drag myself to work, but I will get my work done. Um, I think this has kind of become, um, has forced us to find ways to do this. And has also kind of shown everybody that this can actually work. And that's what we have. We've shown proof of the pudding now. And, and that's the most important part is that we were all wary about this. Oh, how will it work all this well? But now we, have, we had to make it work. Um, and now that we've made it work, we're all going to look at this and take different, different parts of this, right? And, and I'm not saying it's a one size fits all. Everybody has figured different things that work for their business. And we're all going to take different bits and pieces, but largely many aspects of, of what has happened now to the way we work will stick post COVID-19. And, and that's really the way to look at it. But when you look at some parts of our business, right, and I'm, and I'm putting the execution parts away, I'm talking about base creativity. A lot of people say that, you know, you can't be creative um, in, without being in, in the space that, you know, advertising and creative people have always been in. Uh, you can't get those juices flowing. Um, but creative people are being forced to think that way. So I thought it'd be interesting to ask someone, um, who I know um, as one of the most creative people that I've always known over the years, and that's Rohit, uh, my co-founder and the creative chief at Glitch. And I wanted to ask him as an add-on to this question from Sonam, saying, how will this change how creatives work? Because once you change how creatives work and creatives think, that also affects how the entire agency space works. And this is what he had to say. Creative people for the longest time held this dispute for being unorganized, not following schedules or maintaining necessary resources in structured manners. Uh, what this quarantine and uh, remote working has done is changed that. A lot of us realize the importance of being organized when working remotely just to be more productive. So suddenly we've had to adapt and follow calendars, maintain structures. And I think in the long run, it's come it's kind of brought us to believe that being organized is not a crime anymore. It's actually far more fruitful. But the actual other point that that big change that I can see coming through is in the title creative itself. So those 
I mean, it's like these tough times have asked us to become far more creative than we are, or rather it's asked us to not be lazy anymore. So suddenly we don't have the obvious choice of what we do. So earlier when you had to tell a story, you would turn around and say, okay, let's make a film out of it because that was the most obvious thing to do. And suddenly they're not able to shoot. So people are having to rethink newer ways of storytelling. So it's either through new styles, through words, through sounds, etc. And what this is, I mean, when you take away the most obvious answer, that's where the creative juices flow and force us to think out of the box, which we are actually paid to do. So hopefully once this all passes, I think it's important that every time we think of an idea, we also look at it and explore saying, hey, could this have been done a different way? And does bring bring out more creativity amongst us or be far more creative? So I'm going to end with the question which I thought was very interesting. Right? Um, Mackenzie Day wrote to me as one of the questions and he said, what are three things you want to accomplish in 2020? Now, if he had asked me this question three weeks ago, I think my response would have been very different from what I would say now. Um, and I think this is an important question for all of us to sit down and say, hmm, a month ago, three things I want to do in 2020 versus right now, three things I want to do in 2020. So number one, I want to kind of make my bucket list. I've actually started making it. And I say bucket list, it's not what we've always had the cliche there at, oh, I will go do this or I will go jump off a plane, which I'm never going to do or any of those things. It's about the things which I've always thought um, would interest me. And I kind of haven't really given it that focus and say, no, I'll, I'll eventually get down to learning more about it or I'll eventually get down to actually doing it. Um, it could be me just doing um, um, a, a stand-up set. It could be me learning how to make a TikTok video. It could just be me digging far deeper and, and actually reading all the canon for Star Wars. I don't know. It could be it could be all those things. And and most important, it'll also be me making sure that I have I have things put down which I really want to be able to do um, as I get older. So so that my life isn't just about my work. My work should not define me. Um, I should define me. And that's actually my number two point, which is the fact that I want to look at all the things that I want to do beyond work, right? So that I'm not defined by my job. My job doesn't take over so much of my time. Um, in this period, I've, you know, I've also, I've felt the need to, to kind of broaden the scope of, of the stuff that I've I do and not just like professionally or creatively, but just like with family and with my daughter and with, 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 you know, with, it's just something to, to think about is that what do you want to do beyond work and, and how do you keep yourself engaged with that? And lastly, I really want to work with students this year. I really want to figure a way to help students, help them answer the questions they have, um, kind of, help guide them if they want to be guided, just hear them out. Because most times that's what you know, young people want. They want you to hear them or they don't want gyan. They want you to hear them like you would another adult. And if they want your point of view, give it to them. Don't give them gyan without them actually wanting it from you. So yeah, I don't know if this is three things I want to accomplish, but these are three things I really want to do post COVID-19. And before we sign off, I thought I'd give you guys a couple of recommendations of, of stuff you should really, you know, stuff that's been keeping me occupied in terms of just, just generally beyond work and all that stuff. Stuff that I've really enjoyed consuming. Kumail Nanjiani and um, his wife, Emily, have this beautiful podcast series called Staying In With Emily and Kumail. Um, this is them kind of, um, you know, talking about this time that we're all in, where we're all having to stay in. Um, and you know, it's, it's just one of those really heartwarming things to listen to. What I've also been enjoying a lot is, um, there is a f Wolverine fiction podcast. Um, look it up by Stitcher and Marvel. It's an actual legit Marvel podcast. Please listen to it. It's a lot of fun to listen to really engaging story keeps me up. I've also started a, a, a Spotify playlist where I'm just asking uh, people who've follow me and who are listeners and saying, give me music recommendations. 
and whenever someone sends me something, I'm adding it to that playlist. So yeah, go check it out. It's called I think it's called IG Reco something like that. I will. Um, it's 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 on my um, Instagram, so you can just figure it out there. And lastly, don't watch Contagion. It is just going to screw with your mind. Do not let it go. It's a great movie, but no. Watch something funny. Watch something stupid. You anyway going to be following the news all the time, so don't try to find movies that will, you know, mess with your head a lot more than it already is. Find something fun. That's what I've been doing. I've seen this Alu Arjun movie called Ala Vengo to Parumlo um, twice. I'm going to watch it a third time. It's just fun. Just watch something that's easy. Spend time with family. Listen to good music. Make sure you work out. Stay healthy. Don't be a slob. Take a bath every day. Um, I'm just going to ramble on right now till this show doesn't end. So I will just end this show and say, guys, advertising is not dead. Um, we're all going to be safe. So you stay safe. Only then are you going to be safe. Um, stay at home till this all passes by. And more than anything else, wake up with a smile every morning. Hi, I'm Satyajit. Hi, I'm Racheta. We are from the Open Library Project, and we host a podcast called Paperback. Paperback is a podcast where we engage with stalwarts and experts from various industries, suggesting non-fiction titles that contributed to their journey in a big way. We've had guests like Anjali Rana, Dr. Marcus Rani, Dr. Swati Loda, Ambi Parmeswaran, Apurva Damani, and many more on our show Paperback. Find new episodes every Wednesday on IVM Podcast app, website, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Do you have a night routine? Well, everyone has one, and the to-do list usually looks like this: brush your teeth, set that alarm. Get into your pajamas and switch off those screens. But here's one more to add to that list. Tune into the Positively Unlimited podcast for a dose of positive action and tips on how to build powerful mindsets. Episodes out every Monday on the IVM Podcast app, ivmpodcast.com, or wherever you tune into podcasts.